So hello everyone and welcome to a slightly different tutorial today. So here's the thing, imagine that you want to enter the European market or you want to expand and find new markets within Europe. So say that you have a toy company and you want to know where the majority of children are being born in Europe so you can target those markets or you have something for the elderly, elderly, so you want to know where in Europe you have the highest number of elderly, so you can target them, and so on and so forth. There is a database for Europe data called Eurostat, and is absolutely wonderful. It has an API. I've shown you how to get data in other methods, but it does have an API. I finally figured out how the API works. It's actually very easy once you understand like everything. And I'm going to show you. Here's what we're going to do. In today's video, we're actually going to, I'm going to show you how the API works. And I'm going to do it in a separate video because this will help Excel users, Tableau users, Power BI users, any users. I don't want to build in, in another tutorial. So today we're going to find out how the API works. And then on Wednesday, we're going to build this, which is the population and population change in Europe using the API. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to use the API and then we're going to put it into practice using Power BI on Wednesday. So if you are ready, if this is something that interests you, I hope it does because there's amazing, amazing, amazing data available in there. Check it out. Okay, guys, so Eurostat. There is, I'm going to put all the links down below, so don't worry. There is a database for European statistics, it says here. And here you have a tree structure of the data you can find. So you have database by themes, and here you have uh, general and regional statistics, economy and finance, population, industry, transportation, environment, science, you name it. You have tables by themes, you have the same categories, and you have tables by EU policy, cross-cutting topics, there is so much information in here. And then if you want, if we look at the, these that we're going to create on Wednesday, it talks about population and population change, you probably are going to find it here. Here you have demographic and migration, population projections maybe, national level, youth, sport, culture, I mean, it's just, you can find criminal crime statistics, uh, all kinds of stuff. So how do you use this? Um, let's see here, for example, it says population on January 1st by age, type and projection. Wonderful. So here you can unload a zip file and that's fine, but then it won't refresh. We want to actually use the API. Before you actually go into the API, you have actually the possibility to explore how the data looks like. So see, is this database what I need or this data set? And here you can see the European countries. It is by, this is just by country. And then you have the years in there. So you have not only the population for 2019, it has a projection for the future. How cool is that? Hmm. And then you can have sex. You, if you are, for example, just selling women stuff, then you can just, I just, I'm interested just on females. And then you will be able to filter by that. Yeah, you have all kinds of, stuff in there. Um, so you can actually download this data from here too, but you don't want to do that. What you want to do is to connect to the API and then when you click refresh every year, <laughs> get the new numbers. And to do that, there is actually, this is the new data browser maybe? They are changing the look and feel a little bit. So you probably see different depending on where you click. So to be able to get the data from the API, you have here the documentation and it is actually very, very simple. You have the first fixed part, which is always going to be the same unless they change the version, which this could go from 2.1 to 3 or whatever. Then you can change the format, JSON or Unicode, and then you have language. There are three languages available, English, French and uh, German. I don't know why Spanish is not available, actually, quite weird. 
And then you have the data set, the name of the data set that you want. And here you have the filters, OK? And the, the JSON will give you a JSON file. The Unicode will give you a CSV file. And working with JSON files is a mess, especially if you're using Power BI or Excel. So you are going to probably want to use the Unicode. Just heads up. So, OK. You, if you get this URL, for example, they say here, here you have a request. If you click on it and you put the URL on a browser, you will get the result. Okay, so it's as simple as that. That means that you will use a web connector on your BI tool. So a web connector on Power BI or Excel or Tableau or whatever it is. Okay, so how do you build these things? If we go back here to the table, you're going to find the name of the data set a little bit everywhere, to be honest. I found it in different places, but in here is, for example, in there. There is the name of the of this data set. So if we go to, they have a query builder in there. I'm going to put the link down below, don't worry. What you do is you paste the name of the data set and you click next. And this is going to allow you to filter more or less your data set because also you're going to find that there are some certain data sets that you won't be able to download everything that you need to restrict the number of fields. This could be one of them. Let's see. So you can go here and you say, OK, I, I just want to have for the 2019-2021, no more. And uh, you selection fix. This is in case that you want just for a specific country. We want for the entire U. Projection. This is what metrics you're going to get. Let's get all of them if they allow us to. Age. Oh, look, you can target the age. That is fantastic for a marketer. Generate. Let's see if it lets us. Is it you have too many categories? OK, I was guessing that it won't let us. Baseline projection. Let me see if it. This is the hard part. I never know where let's see if it does yeah so now we got we made a selection that makes it that is it smaller enough for us to give us a response so what you need to do now you, you get here a url and if you put the url together there and then we go back to the query builder and we put this part And you press enter, this is doing the call to the API, and this is what is going to get returned to your API <laughs> tool, whatever it is, okay? So that is the way the API works. It's as easy as that. Go and give it a go because the amount of information that is in there is just wonderful. So what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to go and create these using uh, the API in Power BI. So if you want to know how that is done, just stay tuned. And I will see you again on Wednesday as always. So until then, take care.